Sometimes you read at the end of the suttas when the Buddha has been teaching the monks, and then he says, go meditate. Actually, what he said was, go do jhana. Because that was the kind of meditation he taught. Now, some people think that jhana is only one of the two types of meditation he taught, that he also taught vipassana. But there's never any passes where the Buddha tells anybody, go do vipassana. It's always, go do jhana. And this is because he saw jhana as a process where you develop both tranquility and insight. In other words, you need to develop tranquility and insight just to get into jhana to begin with, to get into good states of concentration. And then when you've got that concentration, you can use it to develop tranquility and insight even further. So try not to see the two things as separate. When you're steadying the mind, you've got to have some understanding of what you're doing. And the first factor of jhana involves directed thought and evaluation. Those are called sankharas, verbal sankharas. And those are the topics of insight. In fact, doing activities of Direct your thought and evaluation when you direct your thoughts to the mind. Excuse me, direct your thoughts to the breath, and then you evaluate the breath. This is how you settle down. The more precisely you evaluate the breath, the, the more comfortable you can make it. The more sensitive you are to the breath sensations in the body, the more you can make them a comfortable place to be. And in the course of doing that, you learn things about the mind. You learn things about the breath. What kind of sensations the mind likes, what kinds it doesn't like. How the mind affects the breath, how the breath affects the mind. Right there is a lot of raw material for insight. But in the beginning, your purpose is to settle the mind. This is the tranquility side of meditation practice finding the sensations that are easiest to stay with. And how to maximize those sensations quick, you can develop a oneness of, of mind. Oneness here not, means not only being steadily with one object, but you take that object and you allow it to fill your awareness. So that when you think of breathing, it's not just the air coming in out of the lungs. It's a sensation of energy that flows through the whole body. You're in the, sitting in the middle of this vast breathing process that affects every nerve, affects every muscle, the whole total experience of your body is related to the breath. And the more you can perceive it in that way, the easier it is to settle down. And the easier it is to stay settled down. Working on what the Buddha calls the enlarged mind, mahagatang jittang, own awareness that's all around. Because that kind of awareness is what allows you to see things for what they are. This is the vipassana side of jhana practice. In other words, the Buddha doesn't say to stop doing jhana. He just says, learn to look at it in a different way. Look at it as a process of fabrication, how it's put together. We often think of apostasy means just seeing things as they are, and the idea is that there's something out there, things as they are, and it's all covered up by our preconceived notions about our mental fabrications, and we've got to do is clear those fabrications away, and there will be the pristine things as they are. That's really not insight. What that understanding helps get in the way of insights arising. Because the Buddha didn't say things as they are, things as they've come into being, the process of their coming into being. That's a process of fabrication. 
So once the mind has settled down, you want to look at the fabricating that goes on in the mind to see how the things you experience have a very large element of fabrication in them. The fabrication is your intentional input. That's what the Buddha wants you to see, that the things you thought might be something pristine out there, if you could only get rid of your fabric fabrication, there you would see the pristine things as they are. Well, if you take away the fabrication, there's nothing there. Your experience of the world is a process of fabrication, and you want to see that fabrication in action. And the best place to see it is when the mind is really still. And of course, you fabricate the stillness. So one way to get to know the fabrication process is to keep doing it with as much skill as you can. It's like learning about eggs. You could sit and just look at an egg for a while, and what would you know about it? You wouldn't know much. You'd just see the shell. But you can crack it open. Then you see what's inside. And then you can take what's inside and you can make it into different things. You can make it into scrambled eggs, you can make it into fried eggs, you can make it into omelets, souffles. And the more skilled you are at making different egg dishes, the more you understand eggs, how they react to different kinds of heat, what they do when you put them over low heat, what they do when you put them over high heat. And the more you work with the eggs in this way, the more you understand them. It's the same with the mind. You really want to understand the process of fabrication of the mind. Very purposely fabricate something really good with your mind, like a nice state of concentration, comfortable breath. And in doing so, you learn a lot more about the mind than you would simply looking at it without any knowledge of cause and effect. You've got to manipulate it to see how cause and effect are operating. That's when you understand the process of fabrication. Then when you get the mind really still and try to develop that all-around awareness, then the next step is to protect it. And that's when you start seeing more aspects of the mind. As you try to maintain your concentration, what, what comes in to destroy it? And at first we think it's simply things from outside, but that's not the case. There's a, a lot of the inside fabrication that comes bubbling up. Sounds don't destroy your, your concentration, it's your reaction to sounds. It's not so much what other people do that destroys your concentration, it's what you do. And if you want to see it really clearly, the best place to see it is in the mind when you've got this all-around awareness. Don't leave this awareness. If you think that you have to leave John in order to gain insight, then you're, you've lost your foundation and you're sort of thrashing around. And the mind can get very anxious because it realizes it doesn't have a foundation. So stay in your foundation and look to see what's going to arise. like the spider in a web. You're going to be sensitive to the whole body in the same way that the spider is sensitive to the whole web. The best way to do that, of course, is to have all the different strands connected. That's why we work on connecting all the comfortable sensations in the body, so they form a network, a network of heightened sensitivity inside. then all you have to do is stay in touch with the network, and as soon as anything comes up, there'll be little stirrings here or there in the body. Although it's hard to say whether they're physical or mental, they're on the boundary line between the two. But as soon as you sense them, you can zap them. Little stirring forms, you can tease it out, unform it. 
because what happens if you don't is the mind will go out and will identify it as a thought about this or a thought about that, and then you create a whole thought world based on your perception. Of course, the best way to see the stages in that is to try to stop them as quickly as you notice them and dissolve the thought away. And you'll find there's a part of the mind that's frustrated. It wants to continue weaving that thought, exploring that thought world. And so if you want to understand that compulsion to keep creating these thought worlds, one of the best ways to understand it is to thwart it. Say, nope, nope, nope. As soon as there's the slightest little bit of recognition that this is a thought about that, that's a thought about this, dissolve it, no matter what the thought may seem to be, and see which part of the mind starts screaming. And you start understanding the, the will behind the fabrication. And once you understand it, you can dismantle it bit by bit by bit. And so you get more and more and more sensitive to the parts of the mind that you used to keep hidden from yourself. And as you bring them out into the open, that's where insight can do its work. These things don't come out of their lair unless you stand in their way. They're like people who live in underground strongholds and like to pull the strings. They don't come out unless they feel frustrated because they can't pull the strings anymore. Ultimately, when you totally understand the process of fabrication, and, you'll un and where do you look for it? Wherever there's stress. John Swat used to mention this often. Look at where there's stress. That's where you see fabrication. And where you see fabrication, that's where you see the ignorance is. That's been causing you to suffer. And as you bring more and more of that ignorance out into the open, there comes a point where it just stops. Because you see even the slightest little things that would cause stress, and all the commentating that goes on in the mind that's trying to direct all this. That comes more and more to the fore, and you can allow that to the stop. Allow that to stop. That's when you learn to see something unfabricated. Where the stress really ends. And you don't have to leave concentration in order to see it. You take the concentration apart from within. So this is why when you find that you're trying to gain insight and you're feeling strung out and anxious, that you've lost your foundation, you're looking in the wrong place. Get the mind into a good state of concentration, get it all around aware. And then start looking at the process of fabrication as it appears from this purpose, this standpoint, this viewpoint. And you don't have to go anywhere else. Someone once asked me how I found how I dealt with people who found the experience of awakening to be disorienting. It's about as wrong-headed a question as you can get. Awakening is very orienting. You find that there's something that's a lot more solid and reliable than you'd ever imagined before. And where do you look? You look right here. right where the mind is settled and still. 
and then learn to see that settled stillness as a process of fabrication. And start taking it apart. Right where it's happening. You don't have to go anywhere else. 